Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolfdog91 with the Black Trapper, and we are doing another how-to video. What we're doing today, guys, today we are doing how to make your own cage traps. Yes, that's right, we're doing cage traps, and more specifically, we're doing more or less of a California-style bobcat cage. Now, before I start in this, guys, I have been testing these traps. They have been working pretty darn well. I'm not saying they're going to work 100% of the time. I'm definitely not going to say they're better than like all the, you know, everybody. There's a lot of cage manufacturers out there right now. You have um, Norm Blackwell, uh, Predator Control Group, who Norm Blackwell's in, F&T, Duke, um, who else? Um, have a heart, have a junk, whatever you want to call them. Everybody makes cages, but there are some people like me who like making their own stuff, and there are just some people who don't like the way cages are made, or they can't, you know, order a cage. They can't just afford the shipping to get there, and, and there's just a lot of stuff that goes into it. So, I kind of went on, and I was like, you know what? I want to build my own cage, do a video on how to do it, and one of the main problems I experienced was I could never find the right kind of cage wire. Now... If you don't know, um, cage traps are made in a few different styles, but the one I was going after, which are the California style cages, most of them are non supported cages, which means they're just wire bent into the shape, and then they have the door and the trigger mechanism to it. Well, that wire is a certain type of wire, it's just not like some kind of wire you can go to the hardware store and pick up. Now, you have to buy this wire from certain suppliers. Um, Colbert's, uh, I think that's the correct name for it. Colbert's is like the main place to get it. But the shipping is crazy, and just for the few traps I want to make, it just wasn't worth it for me. So, I found out about Horse Panel. Now, if you seen any of my podcasts, you probably know about the Tossable 220. With that, I use Cattle Panel. Had the same idea, let's make a cage trap out of cattle panel. Well, cattle panel is a 4x4 four four inch square. Most everything can get in and out of that, no problem. But horse panel is a 2x4 inch square. Just about, you know, most critters you catch in it are not going to get out. They can pull a lot of stuff in, but they're not going to get out. And it's not super cheap, but at... $75 what I paid. I paid like $75 for a 16 foot by, I think it was like 5 foot tall horse panel. And for my calculations, it's just what I've been doing. I can get about 4 cage traps, depending on how I build them, out of each panel. And these things are 4 gauge, basically round stock. So, <laughs> they're not going to break once you do it right. So, when we make these, unless your coons are super strong super saiyans or something in that case you probably won't want to be trying to trap them in the first place unless you want to get injured these things are probably going to last forever if you do them right so with that being said we're about to get into it and we're about to have a little fun and make ourselves some cage traps so here we go okay so just want to show you this is the original one i built as you see it's completely metal and it's frameless. Completely made of horse panel. Everything's tack welded together. There's no super duper welding techniques. Extremely low pan trigger. Mechanism. High door. I did a slightly different locking mechanism. And as you see it closes really well, really fast. And it can't open back up. So, here is a section of the horse panel. I actually had to cut it to get into my little trailer. But, as you see, this is only half of a 16-foot horse panel. And out of this piece, if I do it right, I can get about two cages. So, first thing we got to do is cut our pieces. You're not going to bend this at all. So, what I'm going to do is just take a cage trap that I want to model off of and get my dimensions off of. This is just an old have a heart I had just lying around. And this is what I decided I was going to get my dimensions off of. So, I'm just going to measure it. Get my measurements off of it. 
So it's 10 inches wide. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to have a 10 inch wide trap. So it's going to be a narrow trap, but it's also going to be a tall trap. So it's going to be 10 inches by, I think it was like 30, 36, something like that. Oh, just 30, 30, 31, whatever. So we're going to measure that off. And we're basically just using that cage trap as a stencil. So I'm just going to put that on my wire, uh, my panel, my horse panel. And just trying to show you how we want it. We want it on... Well, it's hard for me to count. Well, you can see what I'm talking about. You want it so when you cut it, it's gonna you're gonna have that intersecting piece. You're gonna cut along that line I just pointed out. Pretty simple. Just cut, yeah. Just cut along that. Pretty simple. Not much to explain. And we don't need kind of any fancy tools. I mean, you can use whatever. I'm just using a pair of bolt cutters, and I sped this up real quick. Um, the longer bolt cutters you get, the better, because if you don't, you're going to... I mean, it's good exercise, but you're going to kind of strain your back if you're using short bolt cutters like I did. But we're basically just cutting around there, and we're trying to get... We're trying to cut that nub as close down as we can. Um, if you could, I would grind it, but... Um, just do what you can. So as you see, we got our first, um, this will either be the top or the bottom. And as you see, it just lays on top of the cage. Just showing you what we're doing here. This would be the top or the bottom, as I said. As you see, it's cut out. And we're going to have to cut these little nubs down. Um, just take the bolt cutter, just go back down there, or take a angle grinder or something, and just grind them down. Doesn't really matter. Now we're going to need two of you know we're going to need two sides, and we're going to need two top and we're going to need a top and a bottom. So all we do is just lay the panel we just caught, we just cut, just lay that back on the material we're cutting, and just speed it up and just going to cut you know like a stencil. It's pr pr pretty. Uh, it's, it's pretty self-exclamatory for the most part. I, I probably wouldn't even need to be narr narrating this. Most of y'all are pretty smart to understand what, I, what we're doing here. So as you see there, it took me another minute and a half to cut that. Then we're cutting all the little nubs off. Super simple. And here we go, we have our top and our bottom. Now we're finna cut the sides out. Now, if you want to, you can just take um, a trap you already made, like I did, and you could just lay it down on there, and you can just cut around it like a stencil. But right here, I'm measuring it because this trap I'm gonna make is actually gonna be a little shorter. I felt this trap was a little too tall for what I wanted, so I'm finna make the next one a little shorter. So. This one is going to be 16 inches. The original one was like 24 inches tall, I think. I, I don't remember. But we're going to make this one just a little shorter. So, as I said, basically the same process. You won't want your sides and your bottoms and your tops to be the exact same length, but you want to be a different width if you want a, a tall case. So we're just going to measure it out real quick. No, you know. Again, nothing rocket scientist. Make sure it's going to be the same length as your uh, top or your bottom. And the cool thing about these horse panels, it since it's a 2x4 grid, it's always going to be even if you do it right. So you don't, you know, accidentally cut and it's going to be a completely, you know, um, it's going to be all wacky and everything if you don't do it right. If you cut it, you know, by the little squares or whatever, nine times out of ten, it's going to come out to a pretty half-decent uh, little 
box when you get it all welded together. And if you have a friend who's not doing anything that day, I mean, you could have a friend cutting these out and you could be welding them and you could probably make a traps a lot faster than what I'm doing. Or you could just cut all these out at once and, you know, one day and weld them up the next day. So, you don't have to go through the whole process like I did, but you can. doesn't really matter. And here we go. We're just cutting the other one out. Exact same panel. Just using another one as a stencil. We're just going around with a pair of bolt cutters and just cutting it. And we cut the little nubs off. If you don't cut these off, they're going to be sticking out everywhere. And you're going to be getting, you know, cutting yourself and everything. And it's just, it's just unsightly. If you're kind of OCD like I am, it, it just doesn't look nice. So, as you see, let's kind of show you how it's going to work. That thin piece, the, uh. The um, narrow, narrow piece, that will be the bottom or the top, and then the wider pieces will be the sides. And just to kind of, uh, as a visual aid before we start welding everything. That will be the bottom, then the sides, and then the top. And as you see, they are kind of wop sided out a little bit and you can strain it up just by pressing them in a little bit uh, these are heavy duty and once you uh, start welding them or whatever that that kind of just goes away it's not really that big of a deal anymore but mainly that's just from you know transporting them you know to and from uh, the co-op or whatever so no real big deal Okay, so now we need to cut out the back. Now, the back of the cage, you're going to want it to be the same height. I mean, you want it to be the same width as the top or the bottom, but you want it to be the same height as the sides. So, I'll take a narrow piece, lay it down to get the correct um, width on it, and then I'll take the um sorry guys I'm, I'm doing the um thing a lot I know but then you uh, blah, blah, blah. sorry you'll take the narrow piece and put it on there to get the right um width to it and then you take um one of your sides and put it down to get the correct height that's what I was trying to say but I got all you know I can't talk and then we just cut that out. Cut off your, make sure you cut your nubs off again. And I did speed this up. I'm not moving at the speed of sound or whatever. But I sped it up by like 0.05% or something like that. Just so we don't have to look at the whole thing. Okay, and here we go. Now, when we're all said and done, you should have two sides, a uh, top and a bottom, and you should have a back. And when you're done, I highly recommend you go ahead and just go pick up all these little nubs. Last thing you want to do is have one of these in your car tire. And, you know, just, just pick them up, clean up after yourself. Now we're, now we're going to actually make the gate. Now, if you don't know what the gate is... The gate is what the door, the actual door slides on. And the gate's usually made of, um, you can use C channel, you can use a C or a U channel. But I'm going to actually make my channel just with some angle iron and some flat stock. And I'm just going to, um, cut it about five inches taller than my gate, my actual, um, door is going to be. So, it does, it can't fall off. So, we're just going to cut it with the angle grinder real quick.
So we cut our two pieces angle um, about five inches or three to five inches taller than our actual cage trap. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of flat stock and we're going to weld it so we get basically a channel going there. And again, you can buy, you know, commercially made U channel. And if you know what you're doing right, you're going to get a lot less slop in your door and your door is going to work a lot better. Um, the last one I made, I used, the first one I made, it was like half inch angle iron and a piece of half inch flat stock. And that made an extremely good door. There wasn't a lot of slop in it and it slid extremely well. This one was like one inch angle iron and like, I don't know, like three fourths flat stock or whatever. Did not make a really good one at all, but I mean, it still worked. And we're just going to tack weld the flat stock to the angle iron. Does not take a lot of, you know, as you see, we make two of them. And, you know, not a lot of super squirrely size go to it. Now, I highly suggest you make the gate to, you make your door and your gate to your trap. I would not make my door and my gate and then make my trap to it. That, that doesn't. I did that before and then I got I got some really it worked but it was kind of crooked in places and it just it didn't look right it, 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 it could be a lot better so here I'm actually making it about a half inch wider than my actual cage trap and that's just gonna allow for um, my door to work a little better you don't work you don't want a super super tight door because in bad what if you get dirt or something in there or a little rust, it won't close properly unless it's powered. Um, and powered means it has like a spring or something that shuts it down. Um, a guillotine door traditionally is not a powered door mechanism. It's just gravity. Gravity in the way the door is forcing it down. So all we're doing here is just we're taking a small piece of flat stock and we're welding it to the bottom to keep them spread apart equally. So we want it spread apart 10 inches for the door. So we took a 10 inch piece of flat stock and we welded it to the bottom. And that makes the gate stay 10 inches. And then we're going to take a piece of round stock and we're going to weld it to the top of the gate to keep it spread up there too. Again, it's pretty simple. Not a lot of advanced engineering going on with it. So. It's just a piece of like quarter inch stock, just weld it to the top, and that's just going to keep it uh, opened up at 10 inches. And this is just the way I'm doing it. There, there's a lot of more ways you can do it. Use your imagination. You could use angle iron for the complete thing. You could use, I've seen, you could use like a rod system where like the door hangs off washers and it falls down. You can use that if you want. It, it doesn't matter. But this is just the way I'm showing how I'm doing it. This is like the quote unquote traditional way to do a door. And this is this is the gate. And the door is going to slide through that channel and it's going to stay open. Pretty straightforward. Not, nothing super complicated. Now, here comes the part that a lot of people are not going to like. You have to completely weld this. You can't just, you probably, I mean, yeah, you probably could clip it with rabbit clips if you find real big ones. But if you weld it, you take your time and you do the, you know, spot welds to it. it it's going to last forever if you do it right. Now, I had to fast forward it just because literally just me tinkering around with it. I didn't have my, you know, clamps right. Um, it took me like 20 minutes to get the first couple welds because I just didn't have all my materials right. But all you're doing is spot welds. You're not doing like, you're not running, you know, two feet of, you know, straight, you know, bead. You're just doing these spot welds um, where they connect here to make these corners. And it's not super complicated. If you know how to do a spot weld and you can practice just a little bit, 
that's all you need to do. And I'm not using gas. I'm not using um, arc or, you know, some kind of super TIG or something like that. I'm using a little flux core uh, MIG welder I bought from, um, I, I bought from, um, what's the place? It's on the tip of my tongue, guys. It's, um, Harbor Freight. I bought the 90 amp one with the mask. I spent less than $150. And I think I got like a roll of wire with it, you know, too. If you're going, if you're really going to get into trap mods and stuff like that, I highly recommend you get one of those little welders in a, in a mask. Once you understand how to use it, super easy. So I like to weld to this point so I can go ahead and get the trigger mechanism and everything in it for the most part. Because the last one I did, I didn't put it in until I had the whole cage built and I was, you know, trying to stick my whole body through a 10 inch opening to try and get everything in and it just didn't work well. So I like getting one one corner and the back put on and then we can put the trigger mechanism in. And yeah, I probably should be wearing gloves, but I was just trying to get this in. Guys, I, I, the day was good. I kind of started off a little later than I should have, but I really want to get this out for y'all. And I really feel my viewers are, you know, y'all can figure this stuff out. It's not too complicated. Okay, so now we're going to put start with the complicated part if you ask me and that's the trigger mechanism Now I'm doing just a pan. That's all I'm doing now I'm not doing a solid pan because I didn't have any you know metal that long and that thick to make the actual pan So I'm just using something off an old barbecue grill and I think mine are nine inches long and about nine by they're like nine by eight and they're like in the middle of the pan in the middle of the cage not in the middle of the cage but they're going to be situated fairly close to the cage to the door and i'm going to explain that why in a little bit but the way we're going to do this is we're going to take i think it's like a number like a number 40 d nail and a 316 nut and those two places i just showed we're going to weld that nut there we're going to weld a nut in each one of those places, and then we're going to slip a nail through it. And then we're going to weld the nail to the actual cage. And that's going to make um, the little pivot point. Now, you could use... I don't know, you could... You could take a piece of pipe and weld it to there, and you could just weld a rod straight through. You don't have to use nails. There's a lot of ways you can do it. It's just the way I'm doing it because I had limited materials. But yeah, all we're doing is using the bolts, I mean not the bolts, but we're using the nuts to make um, the pivot point. Now, the nuts are going to be facing toward the door. And I'm going to show you why, because it's going to make the little kind of like the little teeter-totter type thing on. Now, these are like 40, 60D nails slipped through. And we're actually going to weld the nails. We're going to try and get them as straight as we can. And we're going to weld those to the actual horse panel. Now, you can just use, if you have like some quarter inch rod, you can just stick a whole foot of rod through both of these bolts. And that will work better. Go for it. But I'm just using the nails because that's what I had. As 
as you can hear, my stuff isn't working too well. But just to show you what we did, we're not welding the bolt to the nail. We're welding the bolt to the pan, and we're welding the nail to the horse panel, so it gets a teeter effect. As you see, it should be nice, and it just should be able to fall. So, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take another 3 16 bolt, or nail, and we're going to weld it to the side. Well, I'm, you can see where I'm welding it to. We're going to weld it up here, and that's going to be the connection for the actual trigger rod. Now... Looking back on it, it probably would have been a better idea to weld two, one on that side and one on the other side, and run the trigger rod arm through both of them, and you will get a more positive, um, a more positive trigger from that. But this works too. You just have to kind of work with it a little more. And I'm probably going to be doing a separate video on improvements I've done to it once we get there, but... So far, this is probably going to be one of the most in-depth videos on YouTube on how to do this. Because apparently no one wants to talk about it. And that's what it is. As you see, it's kind of close to the door. And that's the way I want it. And my dog is going off. But as you see, our trigger doesn't, how it works is we have, we just have a piece of, I think it's like quarter inch rod, and then it comes down to that bolt, and we weld it an arm. It's about a little one inch long arm that sticks out at like a right angle, and that arm goes through the actual nut down there. Now, we're going to take that nut, I mean that arm, and we're just going to, take the welder we're just going to kind of bubble that out so it can't come back through. Now as I said again it would probably be better if you added a second nut on the other side of the pan. Like this one's on the right side you can put one on the left side and you make that arm like 10 inches long and run it through both of them. That would probably work a lot better because with this one I had a lot of problems with it not wanting to trigger because the arm didn't want to act right. So Again, just something you have to figure out. But as you see, we're not welding it to the nut. We want it to have a pivot in there. So now we weld it on the side, and we're about to weld on the top. Again, it's pretty, pretty repetitive once you understand what you're doing. And this... I would like to have um, got my grinder and grinded all the nubs down so it would be a flush point because when it's not, it, it, the cage kind of comes out a little crooked. It's not that big of a deal, but if you want to sell these and make it really look good, grinding those down or just having like your little brother or something come with the grinder and just grinding the nubs with it, with it flush, you will get a lot better appearance out of it if you're looking to sell these or something. But again, it's, it's whatever you want to do. So I'll just fast forward it through this. Again, we're just doing tack welds. We're not doing, you know, super duper beads or whatever. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apologize in advance because after this, I started losing light big time. So the next, I don't know, three or four minutes worth of video is going to be horrible and I'm just going to switch to pictures. And I'm going to hope that you guys are going to understand enough from just the pictures until I get another video out showing everything in depth and really in depth
and now we got our nice sturdy cage just about built. Now we're about to weld on our actual um the actual gate. Gate's not super hard to weld on. Just push it on there, kind of get it even, and just weld from the wire to the gate. Super simple. This is kind of like the horse panel of the wire because of wire you have to have some kind of weird connection going on, and it's just kind of a pain. So. But weld both sides. You really don't have to weld the bottom. Because the way we made the gate, you can't really do it, but this works just fine. And as you see, the gate is about five inches taller than that actual thing. That's what we want. And, you know, it's going to be nice and sturdy. Make sure this part really, you know, gets burnt in. You want to burn in all your welds on this um, just to make it, you know, more structurally sound. Now, while I'm doing this, let's just talk about why we're we doing a guillotine door. Well, one, you get more bang for your buck if you actually use a guillotine door. Um, if you're doing something like a ring type door, it's kind of hard to explain, but you have a lot less space that can be taken up. I, I guess the way you say it. Another thing is, if you're working here with dogs, um, I'm going to have a video at the you know, end of this. If a dog tries to get into a guillotine door, something really interesting I noticed is when that guillotine comes down and hits them on the back, it scares them and a lot of times they just push back out. You never catch a dog in one of these. But with like the slap type trap, oh, let me stop, let me stop. Now we're making an actual door to it. Now you can make the door out of whatever you want. You can make it out, you can fabricate the door separately. But what I did was I took some horse panel and some quarter inch rebar or half inch rebar and I cut it where it's going to fit fit through the uh, gate properly and it just gives it some more weight so that's the way I'm doing it but you can make it out of quarter inch rod you can completely you know fabricate a new one if you want it doesn't really matter Okay, so now we're coming to kind of the trickiest part of it all, which a lot of people I found do not really understand. And that's getting your pan and your trigger mechanism actually working in tandem. Now, go ahead and apologize. The video's about to get really bad here. But what we're doing is we're going to take a chain link and we're going to slip that over our trigger rod. And we're going to raise our cage door to, you know, however high you want it when it's set. Okay. And that is where you're going to weld your, your actual chain link. So if you want your door at like, you know, at a full 10 inches high, you're going to weld your chain link, you know, 10 inches, you know, behind your door. As, as you can see, it's kind of hard to explain. And that's where your rod is going to rest. Now, your rod keeps your door from sliding down. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pull that rod up once we get it welded in place and everything. We're going to pull your rod, you know, through that chain link until your pan is as, you know, long, um, you know, tall or as low as you want it. Me, I want a low pan. So, the lower the pan, the more you gotta work with it. So, say you want like less than 
half an inch before that pan drops. Well, there's going to be about a half inch worth of movement in your trigger rod. So you got to cut it, your trigger rod, right underneath your door. So when that half inch of movement from the pan happens, that rod comes back and it lets the door fall down. If that makes sense, it's kind of hard for me to, um, you know, explain it. With I can show it to you in a second, but it's kind of hard for me f to explain it. So, once we get that done, what I like to do is you can heat that little part up a little bit, and you can bend it where it's straight, and that keeps it a little more stable, and it doesn't let it just, you know, go off by itself. Um, something else I did after I did that is I welded a little bead, not a not a big bead at all, a very very light bead little bubble weld on the tip um on the tip of the trigger rod so it can't just fall straight back on a smooth rod as you see it's kind of I strain it out a little bit and I weld that little bead so now there's kind of, it's kind of like a night latch type thing on, like a, um, what you call those traps, uh, the MB traps, it has like a little bubble, when you click, and it clicks down, and it gives that little extra bit of pan tension. And here, you see the little arm, that arm has to be there, you just can't have it straight, because you won't get the right, um, You won't get the proper, sorry guys, I'm, I'm really having a brain fart right here. Uh, you won't get the proper leverage. And I also added these little rings made of number 9 wire, and those are retainers. And that just keeps, you know, it, when, once the animal gets in there and he starts bumping around, it just keeps him from getting caught, you know, pulling it out. And this is the lock. The lock is just a piece of um, half-inch angle iron. I welded a nut to it. And the way it sits is you're going to slip a nail through that nut. And you weld the nail to the front of the gate, and when it sits properly, when the door closes, the edge of that sits over the door, and it won't let it come up. So here's our, you know, cage trap, set, low pan, all that good stuff. And here's an example of what I was talking about with the dog. And you see, he, he couldn't get caught in, even though he was halfway through it. And here's an example of a cat. Halfway through, and it, you know, it shoots him straight through there. So, I hope this wasn't as painful as it sounded. I hope this actually gave you guys some good information. I'm going to try and put a uh, secondary video up soon describing how these work better. But until then, I really hope this has been food for thought for y'all. So, you know, you know, thanks for watching. I really hope this helped. Um, like, comment, subscribe. And as always, I, I love you guys.